Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm here with one of my favorite ensembles from the Reactor user library called Digit 8. Digit 8 is a really cool ensemble and I'll talk a little bit about how it works in just a minute but first let's just check out a sound sample. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new reactor content around once a week. So as you can hear, Digit 8 kind of excels at making these very strange, abstract uh, video game type sounds. And it operates around an idea that kind of originated a few years ago in a project called Byte Beats which was the idea that you could create these complex and evolving sounds uh, using a single line of computer code. And I've added an oscilloscope to this project over on the right hand side here. This is just so we can get a good look at the waveforms that we're creating and just learn a little bit about how they work. So the single line of code that's going to make our sound is displayed in the upper left hand corner here. And in order to create it, we have access to a little keyboard directly beneath it. And this will let us add uh, constant values, a slew of math functions to operate on them, and several variable types. So the most important variable we have to work with is called t which is a time counter, and this is just going to count the amount of time since the last incoming MIDI note. And t is the most useful variable that we have, so it's the one I'll be focusing on, but real quickly, the other ones, a and b are decided by the a and b knob. f stands for the incoming oscillator frequency. Um, the p stands for the incoming oscillator pitch. I is a um, auxiliary value that you can hook another reactor input into, and V is the incoming uh, MIDI velocity. So when we press a new note, the value of T is going to continue to increase constantly, and uh, we'll see that the waveform that it outputs looks just like a saw wave. <laughs> And so as the value is getting larger and larger, we're just wrapping it around into a range that we can hear. And doing simple modifications to the T variable uh, can give us some really cool waveforms. And the most useful mathematical functions that we have access to are going to be on the second and third rows. Um, so the second row here has the four bitwise operators and the modulo function. And we see that we can just use those in tandem with our T counter to get some pretty interesting waveforms. So I'm just using the bitwise functions and just a random integer here. And so you see it's pretty easy to take this original sawtooth oscillator that we had and just change it into something a little more unique and interesting. So even if you don't understand bitwise operators or math very well, this ensemble is really fun to play around with. I don't generally, you know, create some function thinking about how cool it's going to sound. And normally I'm just kind of punching stuff in and seeing how it works. So one sound I kind of like is to use the modulo function in tandem with a large integer and the T counter to get a um, kind of a pitch um, glide effect. Okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar with the modulo function, 
it's basically giving you the remainder of the division operation. So we're dividing um, 9,455 by our T counter and then um, using the output, the remainder of that division um, as our output. So the sound is going to stop as soon as our T counter goes over our constant value of 9,455 because the output of the modulo is always going to be exactly the same. Um, if you're dividing a smaller number by a bigger number, the remainder is always going to be um, equal to the smaller number. So in order to kind of get this sound that we just made to repeat, we can change the uh, T value by moduloing it against a larger value than our first constant. And you'll see that just kind of gives us the same sound we had before, but now it's repeating constantly. And so this is just kind of how I work with Digidate. Uh, I find something that seems cool to me, and then I just keep screwing around with it and looking for ways to improve it. So we can just keep going from here by, you know, adding another operation to the end of our function. <laughs> So just be creative and experiment. If you're having a hard time or you're not getting the results that you want, I would suggest Googling Byte Beats and just taking a look at some of the equations that are out there. Uh, most of them can be entered into Digidate pretty easily and they can just work well for inspiration or ideas. <laughs> All right, so the knobs over here are mostly self-explanatory. We have the attack and release times of an envelope, um, the volume control up top, a sample rate, which is kind of cool. It just will affect your sound in different ways. Um, an octave knob, and a tuning knob. All right, so this is just a really cool little synthesizer that doesn't really sound like anything else out there. It's one of the reasons I really like Reactor is we can just create these devices that are completely bizarre and strange and don't function like a normal synth at all. All right, so this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, please check out our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll be back next week with another reactor tutorial.